Um, this was a really important part of the bill that we just passed. Um, it's going to lift half of American children who are currently in poverty out of poverty, make a difference in the lives of 26 million families. And it starts this week with checks as high as $300 per child. But the, the biggest change um, is that is that we've made it fully refundable. So in the past, that credit only applied if you had some taxable income to offset. Now, um, if you don't have any taxable income, you will get a check, hard cash from the federal government. Those checks are going to start flowing on July 15th. Um, so this week, folks will start to see those checks that you will see $300 show up in your bank account sometime around July 15th. Um, the if for some reason you you didn't file last year, you didn't pay, you can still you can you, but you are eligible. You can still get this. Go to childtaxcredit.gov, and you can make sure to get yourself registered. It's, it's a hugely hugely impactful program. Um, for me, it's it's a little bit more wriggle room. It's I have two children, so it's going to be two thousand dollars a year of a little bit more wiggle room. And kids are expensive. Um, I read an estimate a couple of years ago that raising a child in the U.S. costs somewhere around, you know, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from birth to eighteen. So that doesn't include college. That's just you know raising your kid through the end of high school. And I got two of those. Um, those costs kind of creep up on you in all kinds of ways. Like you don't necessarily think of it as a family because you're too busy like taking care of everybody's needs. Um, and I think what people, the data point that people don't quite, aren't quite aware of, and I'm sure Ursula's district is of interest as well, um, in the District 200, the Wheaton Warrenville District, we're at 27, 28% free and reduced lunch students. Um, which is a sizable portion of our student population. At the, the Glenbard schools, at least two of our buildings are at thir over 30% free and reduced lunch. Um, so we're talking a, a lot of kids in our communities that are gonna be directly positively impacted by this. So I, I think it's gonna open up um, opportunities, really needed opportunities for our working families in both the community I live in and that I teach in. So the, the best estimates I've seen of Illinois is um, that there are about two and a half million Illinois children who, who will qualify for, for some of this expanded benefit. And But the, the real amazing thing is that there are 153,000 of those who are currently below the poverty line who will be above the poverty line after this comes through. And that's just a huge deal. I mean, that's a family that is sitting there right now trying to decide between diapers and rent and doesn't have to make that choice. Um, the, the types of jobs that are having a really hard time hiring people right now are jobs that have historically depended on, on women of childbearing age because the child care system was the first thing to fall off during COVID and it's the last thing to come back. Women's participation rate in the economy right now is as low as it has been since 1989. Um, it's not because those women don't wanna work, it's because the, the way that COVID has whipsawed our economy has, has just not made it possible. So by, by getting that extra coverage to make sure that people cannot think so much about the $750,000 that Ursula mentioned and start thinking about getting back to normal, um, it's going to have hugely beneficial ripple, ripple, rippling benefit effects for the whole economy, even for those folks who, who don't have kids. It would have given us as a family some wiggle room. And I know having um, both of us working, it was that child care, that child care, um, just juggling it both mentally, emotionally, financially juggling childcare. Um, and again, I was, I'm fortunate enough to live in a, a great community with a great school district that had a before and after school care program um, that the kids enjoyed, but, um, but it was expensive. So you had to, we had to make a lot of choices about what we were gonna spend our money on. What we're hoping to do is to change. So what everything that I've described and for anybody watching at home, this is for the, the next 12 months. Um, that was what we got passed in the recovery bill to get it through. Um, our goal is to make it permanent. Um, the goal would be to make this a permanent fixture so it does become the new normal. So that you have 
that you have that flexibility and can plan for it. Because as, as helpful as it is this year, you've still got to make a decision about next year. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think this is definitely going to make a much needed positive influence. And again, it's that it's just that little extra, right? So I think all all educators, whether it's the cafeteria worker to the bus driver to the classroom teacher, we've all seen and we've all we all know that there's that kid that decided not to try out for the soccer team, but you don't know why, or the kid that didn't you know, pick up the band instrument. You're not sure why, but you find out, like we all know this kid that you find out later, it's because they didn't think their family could afford it. They didn't want to say anything because they were a little embarrassed, right? And so you, you know that there's ways of that happening, but they're just a little embarrassed. And and now this can be the, the money that the family uses to get them the uniform, to get them, you know, the athletic, uh, funding, the, the rent, the instrument. Um, and we know as educators, hands down, you get a kid interested in something extra, it's something that they love, it connects them to school, and it doesn't only positively impact their academic behavior, but it, their social emotional needs and their mental health exponentially. In the U.S., child poverty costs us as a society a trillion dollars a year. This will cut child poverty in half.